Well, we have another COVID alert for you as we get closer to the Thanksgiving holiday. All week, we were getting advice from the CDC along with state officials and public health experts. Yeah, right now, of course, out of the 169 towns and cities, 100 of them are in red alert status, which equates to about 80% of our population. And we've been talking about Thanksgiving all week and advice coming from the CDC as well as state officials and public health experts. Joining us this this morning is Dr. David Bannock from UConn Health. Dr. Bannock, thank you so much for joining us. So we want to start with Thanksgiving as we've been talking about it. As someone who's been dealing with this pandemic day in and day out, what are your recommendations for Thanksgiving to your patients? So, so thanks for having me on. I think, you know, as we're looking at what's happening here in Connecticut and even more broadly in the United States, you know, we're seeing uh, rises in COVID-19 um, kind of across, across the country. Um, so I think, you know, Thanksgiving, we have to be extra cautious. You know, when I'm thinking about um, what Thanksgiving could look like, and um, the key is to really keep it safe um, while still managing to have that socialization. So, you know, I, th I think uh, the CDC has really great um, guidelines. I'd encourage um, uh, everyone to take a look at those. Um, you know, some of the main things to focus on are keeping groups as very small, um, really close family, um, household contacts, um, trying to keep things outdoors as much as weather permitting, and then still focusing on those main measures like the distancing between individuals. Um, and and then wearing masks when you can, like when you're not eating, um, are uh, important preventive steps. But then a, a related problem is people sort of mixing their bubbles because college students may have been in their own bubble out at college on campus, now coming home to a family bubble. That can create a whole bunch of problems right at a time when we're just trying to hang on and not let this explode. So how can you navigate that or should they just not even bother? Well, I mean, I think we have to be extra cautious with um, college students. They're um, currently living in a congregate environment where there could be high rates of COVID, um, as well as traveling, um, which would expose them to others. So I think, you know, if you have a college student that's going to be um, uh, coming over, uh, you know, be being extra cautious with that individual, um, trying to really focus on keeping that individual, um, you know, segregated with some distance away from other people. Uh, really, the mask wearing is going to be really important um, whenever possible. Um, and then, you know, I think the third piece is if you do have someone in the home who is at high risk, say um, an elderly individual um, or an individual with a lot of medical conditions, um, really doing what you can to protect that individual from uh, the college student who may be at a higher risk for transmitting infection to others. So, you know, I, I think you just have to be extra cautious with the college students. You know, they can um, they can participate and be there, but um, you know, with, with that added layer of protection. Uh, it's not been good news the past few weeks here in Connecticut. We've been watching those hospitalizations rise a bit. Does that match what you guys are seeing inside of the hospital at UConn Health? Has, oh, how are you guys doing capacity wise? So you know, we are seeing increases in cases. Um, you know, we're not seeing this, the, the type of rise that we saw in the springtime when it was really very rapid um, and we had uh, more concerns about capacity. So, you know, we've had some time to prepare. Uh, we have a lot of contingency plans on how to handle if we see uh, what we call kind of a linear pattern of um, cases coming in or if we see a more rapid exponential pattern. Uh, we have different contingency plans to ensure that we do have capacity. But, you know, it's something we really have to keep an eye on. You know, anytime that uh, we're seeing rising rates of COVID, um, you know, we have to be ready to respond. And, you know, I think hospitals across the state are preparing. We're working together um, and uh, ensuring that we're uh, going to be able to provide safe care to uh, the patients coming in. I want to ask you one last question, less objectively and maybe more subjectively. Are you getting a sense that there's some degree of COVID fatigue either in your patients or in coworkers that uh, they've had to keep up this vigilance for so long that it's it's starting to get a little more trying? Yeah, I think um, the COVID fatigue is real. You know, we see it um, in the hospital. You know, our patients um, are feeling it. Um, you know, even, you know, our healthcare workers are feeling it. You know, we've been battling this now for several months. Um, and, uh, you know, I think at the beginning, uh, there was a big thought that this was going to be a short-term um, issue. But now we're seeing that this is really, we're in it for the long haul. You know, I think, you know, we have to take it uh, one step at a time and know that, um, you know, there is going to be an end in sight. You know, we're seeing some signs of optimism. You know, some of the vaccine data that just came out this past week is looking very promising. Yeah. Uh, we have new therapies that are coming out um, that are uh, going to be designed to help prevent patients from becoming um, sicker and needing hospitalization. So I, I think we're seeing those incremental progress uh, being made in terms of our uh, therapeutics and our prevention strategies. But we really got to um, be extra vigilant the next few months, uh, you know, are going to be tough. And, uh, you know, I think we have to know there's going to be eventually an end in sight and, uh, you know, do what we can to focus and, uh, you know, try to keep each other safe. All right. Dr. David Bannock of UConn Health, thank you so much for once again joining us this morning. Thanks for having me on.